This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Russia's seaborne diesel and gasoline exports rose in November on increased fuel production following a reduction in seasonal and unplanned refinery maintenance, LSEG and market sources data show. Offline primary oil refining capacity in November stood at 2.4 million tons from 4.6 million tons in October, Reuters calculations based on data from industry sources, showed. A decline in idle capacity means refineries consume more feedstock to produce oil products. In total, diesel and gasoline exports from Russian ports rose last month to around 2.83 million metric tons, up 11% from October, based on LSEG shipping data. Igor Sechin, the head of Russia's largest oil producer Rosneft, said on Thursday that the OPEC Plus Group's decisions to reduce oil output in 2016 and 2020 helped the U.S. shale industry and made it a leading global energy exporter. Sechin, speaking at a forum in the United Arab Emirates, said Russia and its partners have made the main contributions to the global energy market stabilization in the past 10 years. A long-standing ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, Sechin has previously expressed skepticism about Russia's cooperation with the OPEC, saying that the United States benefited most from the deal, struck in 2016. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. U.S. crude stocks fell by more than expected last week as refiners ramped up operations, offsetting a rise in crude imports, the Energy Information Administration, AIA, said on Wednesday. Crude inventories fell by 5.1 million barrels to 423.4 million barrels in the week ended November 29th, the AIA said, compared with analysts' expectations in a Reuters poll for a 671,000-barrel draw. Crude stocks at the Cushing, Oklahoma, delivery hub rose by 50,000 barrels. We've seen the return of refineries from seasonal maintenance, leading to a drop in crude oil inventories and a commiserate rise in gasoline and diesel stocks, said Andrew Lipow, president of Lipow Oil Associates. Three trading houses have become dominant sellers of Russian oil to India as many smaller players dropped out of the business due to high funding costs in Russia and lack of access to Western funds, according to data and six trading sources. The change reverses a trend of dozens of little-known trading firms flooding the market for oil trade between Russia and key buyers China, India and Turkey, lured by prospects of higher fees to help Russian producers skirt Western sanctions. India has become the biggest buyer of Russia's seaborne crude after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in 2022, with purchases near record highs at 1.8 million to 2.0 million barrels per day, or more than a third of its crude imports. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. London copper prices were little changed on Thursday as market participants sought more clues on China's fiscal stimulus and news on potential U.S. trade tariffs. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange, LME, was nearly flat at $9,088 per metric ton by 0704 GMT. Meanwhile, the most traded January copper contract on the Shanghai Futures Exchange closed 0.3% down at 74,530 yuan, $10,258.77, a ton. Traders are anticipating additional fiscal stimulus measures from the upcoming Central Economic Work Conference in China, the world's largest consumer of metals. Iron ore futures prices slid on Thursday as investor sentiment dampened after state media in top consumer China emphasized qualitative improvements ahead of a long-anticipated meeting that is expected to set the tone for economic growth next year. The most traded January iron ore contract on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange ended daytime trade 1.17% lower at 800 yuan and 50 fen, $110.14, a metric ton. The benchmark January iron ore on the Singapore Exchange was down 1.51% at $103.75 a ton, as of 0700 GMT. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Sugar prices in India fell to their lowest level in one minus one half year due to ample supplies, 
making it difficult for mills to pay farmers the cane price as the crushing season gains momentum, industry officials told Reuters. The fall in prices is prompting industry to demand immediate revision in minimum selling price, MSP, to limit losses, which will improve mills' margins and allow them to make timely cane payments to millions of cane growers. Sugar prices have fallen below the cost of production. This makes it difficult for mills to pay the revised cane price unless sugar prices rise, said B.B. Tombare, president of the West Indian Sugar Mills Association. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.